Bee populations have been declining globally. Pesticides, changing weather patterns, and loss of habitat all pose a threat to them. Keeping them healthy is vital to our survival. Now Washington State University is leading a new project to map out and identify the different kinds of pollen they gather and the nutrients within it. I spoke with the chief scientist behind the Pacific Northwest Pollen Atlas. Joining me now is Priya Chakrabarty Basu, an assistant professor in WSU's Department of Entomology. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So what do you hope to learn from this project? I really hope to be able to understand what the bee's nutritional landscape looks like. We know that there are so many different plants that bloom, which can be really good pollen sources for bees. So I'm hoping to be able to map them over the next several years, month by month, week by week, and hopefully be not only be able to understand what these plants are, when they are blooming, across the region as well as eventually across the country, but also what the nutritional quality of these pollen sources are. So why is it important to know exactly what kind of pollen they're gathering? That's a great question. Uh, bees are just like us humans. We are what we eat. So similarly for the bees, plants are providing pollen and nectar. Each plant variety has a different type of macro and micro nutrient profile that it uh, it offers to the bees in terms of pollen and nectar. So the diverse the diet, the better diversity of the nutrients that bees have access to. So it is really important to be able to sort of figure out which ones might be the French fries versus the salad in the landscape. Uh, so, so. Yeah, so once you know the kinds of flowers, how can that information be used to help keep the bees healthy? Once we know what the nutritional quality of those flowers are and we have an idea about what time they are blooming, this information could be practical for beekeepers, gardeners, even conservationists, anyone who wants to be able to have a pollinator garden, so as to say in their backyard. So we will obviously, we have an idea what grows best in our region for a particular season. But there are these microclimates. For example, even if you look at the state of Washington, there are microclimates between counties, even within the same county. So it will be important for us to be able to map that bloom time to understand their phenology. And this way, we will eventually be able to kind of figure out, all right, if I'm keeping bees, this is a good spot for highly nutritious pollen during this time of the year. Or we can start to map maybe the bloom times are slack are slightly shifting over the years. Maybe we are losing plants, we are gaining plants, but most importantly, we can better manage our hives if we know when we need to target nutritional supplements. So I imagine you're not gonna be the only one out there gathering up the pollen. What kind of feedback are you getting from beekeepers who might be willing to help you? I am very grateful for the tremendous support and feedback that I've been getting so far from the beekeepers. I cannot do it alone. I need volunteers from every county if possible in the region to be able to keep on trapping pollen for us, to be our citizen scientists, our boots on the ground to help us map this pollen. So if you're interested in joining this endeavor, please reach out to me. Does it take special training? Can anybody take part in your efforts? Anybody can take part in our efforts and we are actually building two separate nutrition databases. One is specifically targeting beekeepers as our citizen scientists. The other, anyone could help collect pollen for us. But you do not need any special training because once you sign up, we do host periodic online trainings, we meet with our volunteers and we go over the protocols. I worry the bees are endangered. What's the latest on the status of how they're doing right now? You might have heard about the tremendous number of colonies that we lost this past overwintering uh, season. So we lost close to about 62% on an average colonies in the U.S. Project APSM, the uh, American Beekeeping Federation, sort of got together and put together surveys that a lot of beekeepers responded across the board, across the United States. We are losing our colonies. This was an unprecedented loss in quite a few years. Wow, well, we appreciate your efforts. I know this is a long-term study, correct? Yes, absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much, Priya Chakrabarty Basu, for helping save the bees. Good luck, keep us posted, and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.